Right, here we go. This is for the patient among you. Now, the intention with this is to give people who perhaps don't know um, an idea of what I do. And hopefully we will see, uh, successful perhaps, if I upload this, we will, you will get an idea of what's going on <clears throat> even though on the exterior I'm just meditating. Okay, so I have done something like this before. It was uh, coming up for four years ago, well, three and a quarter, three and three quarters. And um, there was emotion and stuff like that. Now, I'm not expecting anything like that. But you never know, you never know what's going to happen. Um, I'm not really seeking any specific truth at the moment, nothing big anyway, um, but really the intention is, is to give people some idea of the, the depth that there is within. So I'm going to be closing my eyes and then my awareness is going to change, it's going to be um, sensing what I can feel. Now, <laughs> that word feel. So if I say feel, it means how you would describe some of the feelings. You know, you, you could have words like tingles and rushes and uh, uh, glowing or um, yeah, sharp, soft, you know, but they're things that you're actually feeling. And there's different places you can feel stuff in and around your body. Now, once I start, <laughs> I'll get into it pretty quickly because uh, I've done a few minutes here and there today, but you know, I've been smoking the herb all day. It's bank holiday Monday, by the way. Um, and yes, part of the preparation for me is to smoke some herb. Um, just like the characters in the Bible would burn sweet incense and then have apparitions of angels and things like that. Now you can meditate without smoking herb but probably the most you'll get is into a feeling of bliss, relaxing. You know I'm not saying bliss isn't nice but there's something like I said you could get into that relaxed state. If you had, you know, two weeks to sit around on the beach, you could get into a really relaxed state and you could probably, um, you know, lucid dream or all sorts of stuff like that. But the cannabis certainly seems to enable something. I see it as an enabler. Like it enables an escape route from the reality that we kind of see around us. It is like the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Eat of the tree of knowledge and know good and evil. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Because, yeah. And then you may eat of the tree of life and become gods, and that is the one love within. So, okay. Uh, also, I'm drinking tea, and also I haven't eaten anything since breakfast, which was a pear. It's now about four, five, five o'clock. Got a couple of computers working. Could be a bit of a distraction, but there they can be left, so it shouldn't be. The camera is obviously going to be a bit of a distraction, although I get used to it. 
Um, at one point I'm probably going to think, oh this video is going to be crap. And at one point I might think, oh this video is going to be good. And um, that in itself is going to distract me. So I'm going to try and not worry about that. And also, because I'm going to be trying to say what's going on. And if, if I stop talking, it's just because I don't want to lose what's going on and have to start from scratch. And this may not work. Uh, you know, I don't know. <clears throat> you know, when you sit down to meditate, you sit with two things. You probably sit with more, but you sit with your current knowledge where it is. It's your current truth, your current belief system about everything that is. And that, of course, is going to have a massive effect on what happens. And if you just learn something new or there's something you're running with, you might be working on it. So that's going to be sort of front in your thinking and it's going to affect things. And, you know, what you've done that day, if I just, you know, like I saw this customer earlier, haven't really processed anything, don't know if there's going to be anything to process from that. We'll see. Um, so you have two things, and then so the second thing you have is your intention. Now at the moment, I haven't got any clear intention of what I want from this. Uh, but we'll see. <laughs> I say that a lot. <clears throat> right. So I might set an intention at some point. <coughs> so my method is just to, I'm just going to sit, I'm going to stay still, my body will be still, and therefore you start to notice other movements. And now they could be on the outside of your body, itches and things, I still get tickles and stuff now and then, different places. Pain. <clears throat> Pain is the resistance of a deeper feeling and really, you know, the heart is the centre. The heart is is the main thing. Like, stuff happens on the heart, you know, it is the main thing and you get visions and stuff like that but sometimes that's just helping you to work out what's feeling on the heart. The heart is the future. It's a million times more interesting and everything else than what you think of as your reality. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to keep talking, maybe just sort of get used to it. Um, you might have to turn up the volume a bit because I'm quite far away from the video camera. And hopefully me talking won't disturb the feelings. Okay, so starting off straight away with the feeling in the centre of my heart, but it's sort of it's sort of showing me an uh, area in my stomach which seems to have something, there seems to be the stuff in your sort of stomach, I say stomach, I mean, you know, the gut. Like, if you push stuff away, you push it into the gut. So, if there's something rising there, you just want to allow it into the heart. And the, by the way, the reason I'm not wearing a top is so you can see my breathing more easily. So I'm just letting that feeling. Can't really talk while it happens. Eh? So the feeling from the stomach is just washing, is a, being allowed into the heart, and then I get a pleasurable sort of washing feeling, carrying on. 
my chest and then done. Something I've been thinking about lately is the pancreas. If I'm talking funny, it's to enable the feeling to carry on. So all, all the organs in the body represent some something in the soul. The pancreas is kind of a enzyme producer. It seems to only work in children well. And, uh, I feel like I've been um, reinvigorating mine which is kind of what I feel is going on now. I'm just imagining this sort of bluish, uh, elongated, sort of cigar shaped thing in the center of my body, vertical. And it's kind of just it's a nice sort of feeling. Just sort of, uh, you know, it's right in the centre of me. It's just sort of uh, like it's expanding and contracting with with each feeling. Sometimes these surges get a bit strong and you feel that in the centre of your back sort of a block. You just gotta be more gentle. Okay, so now I'm feeling the feeling has kind of extended into my head. So it's still in my heart, come from my heart. Extending my head up to the point of the forehead and feel the pressure on my temples, which is where I have a connection with Mother and Father God. So that's made me think of my Mother and Father God. Mummy and Daddy. guide and my teacher, my protector and my comforter. Send them some love. Recently I've been realising how long they've been nurturing us and looking after us, training us, it's such a long time. So fortunate. feeling a nice buzz on my temples. At this point I usually, and I've just started to do it, is just feel, wanted to feel Mother and Father God in my heart and I felt Mother first, just underneath, like where I'm sitting, just a lovely sort of 
yeah, pinkish glow come up into me. Sort of, it's crisp. It's always so clear with God. And as I think of Father, I sense him and feel him in my heart. Like that feeling you know so well. And if you haven't felt it for a long time, we will know it when you feel it. And he's bright white directly from above. Directly above. Feel in my heart. The gentleness. I am the one love within me and I am within God. This is the ultimate place to be. This is something else that I've only recently experienced fully at this point of my knowledge. The one love within me, and I am the container, and I am in my mother and father, who is also a container with the one love within. To be able to simultaneously feel this is not easy, it's a new thing I'm learning. It's going to take a bit of getting used to. I've experienced it fully once and a couple of times I've got close. Tip my head forward, just to the point where I can feel the pressure on my forehead, holding it there. Try again to feel the simultaneous. Someone's gently kneading my forehead. I don't want to try too hard to feel something. I'm just going to allow what happens, let go a bit more. Just being aware of what I am. a little flash of a cave from inside, slightly more advanced, like that's when I last felt like this, that's when I felt this feeling then.
Because as a child, you wouldn't really have the faculty to contemplate. You're in a whirlwind. So you're feeling God, but you're in a whirlwind. So I wouldn't necessarily have been able to do this as a child, even though I was closer to God as a child. feeling stuff in the heart, allowing a, it's a feeling coming down the heart, just a, because I'd had some, I'd had a realisation, put two and two together, This is probably some sort of balancing effect, just of a new truth. Not a major one, it's just. So just trying not to forget what I am and what I'm capable of and these these feelings are manageable. Remind myself I have the one love within, so bring anything deep and it meets the one love and it's sorted. And then I just want to remind myself of who I'm in. Staying calm. I say I spend a couple of seconds here and there every now and then thinking about the video. So what was I doing then in that cave? It was more than a cave, it's like a... The wall seems slightly rounded and there's a window. And it's sort of whitish, creamish. I'm just sitting on the floor. Like as if I'm just sitting around, drum a finger in the dirt, thinking, I guess. So cross-legged or anything, just legs out, one crossed over the other. I seem to just be wearing as if it's just like a Captain Caveman thing, looped over one shoulder. I think I've got some sort of sandals on. Beard. Hair not 
massively long, dark. I imagine I'm white skinned, but I might just be imagining that I can't get a fix on that. Perhaps it's just not even a question what colour skin I am. I am now seeing a sort of a bronzy colour, like a medium brown. I was feeling inside mother and father God and having the one love within me then. Move on. Clear my mind. It's not clearing. I've still got that image there. Sort of seeing a bit outside. There seems to be something on the hill in the distance, like a dome. Could be something of the sun. The sun is behind the clouds, pink and red. There seems to be buildings, as if you'd expect some sort of like it was a street, but building either side, like nothing opposite each other, but so in a diagonal line there's another one, there's a, take another diagonal line there's another one, like about four or five and then bushes or something, and then further in the distance I get the feeling there's more buildings. There's a hill which is in the horizon. Doesn't seem to be anyone about. Just maybe one board. But obviously having a nice feeling. I know what it is. Don't think I do. I don't know. Do I? It obviously keeps popping into my head if, it, if I'm Enoch at this stage. It's something I've wanted to know for a long time and I haven't had hardly any info on it. Well, I'd wanted a clear memory, that's what I asked for. So if this is my first clear memory of being Enoch, and it's just a frame, the information is just a frame of time, I could probably work on it, which would be the natural thing to do, wouldn't it? I think I'm balding. <laughs> Just saw that. My face seems to be a bit monkey-like. I'm getting hair and stuff. Like 
all over the body hair like a monkey. So yeah, this seems to be more the truth. It doesn't seem to be the Enoch thing that didn't click. But this is sort of clicked. Uh, like a more primitive type of human but not so primitive if it was in a little house of some sort of manufacture must have made the house. But it's sort of dug into a hill and, and it's like small. Can't quite get what the roof is. But it seems to be a wall that's been smooth and, and with clay or whatever, mud, and it's smooth. I'll get back in the feeling, stay with the feeling. I'm just still seeing a monkey, I'm not getting anyone else, I'm feeling that sort of like it's cut off or something, so I don't know, um, I don't want to try too hard, I'm just going to let go, clear the mind, clear the feeling. Seeing blue sky, so I'm not used to like talking at the same time. I think I should probably just kind of carry on muttering while the feelings carry on and see what happens. And my stomach can sit up straight. Warm feet, pinch in the middle of the back. the feeling is to allow the feeling to do what it wants to do to complete and take it to the heart the heart knows what to do but if it shoots up in the air then it shoots up in the air shooting up in the air is good Just 
got these waves coming up. And the warm feet. Remember my awareness again, what I am. Not one love within me, a container. And inside a container, our mother and father, Jesus, God. That's the one love within them. Ah, oh, maybe I was a captive. Yeah. I wasn't free. I was a monkey in a cage. Huh. Interesting. But I'm not going to focus on that. I'm not going to focus on anything, just allow the feeling. I'm actually thinking of ending the video, thinking that's a good example, but I might as well just cut on. Oh. Kept going back to the monkey in a cage thing. I was thinking the other day, you know, I did draw the line once a while ago and say, no, we wouldn't have had any souls in animals while that were humans on the earth. Now I'm just wondering if that's true. And it's opening me up to something, so... If we're going with the heart and that's what we're doing, then we're saying this appears to be something truth. Were they humans? I don't know. But anyway, yeah, just open up another can of questions. Hey, that's cool. Why not? But the window doesn't seem shut. I've got some ink around my neck. Maybe this isn't a past life of mine. Maybe this is somebody else's life in the future on a different planet, even. got to remember what again what was key started off with me getting into that feeling and this image flashed up in my mind and it was like the last time I had had this feeling so maybe I've just let my imagination run away with me a bit but there's a key information was, uh, yeah, because I was looking at it, there seems to be this window, but there doesn't seem to be a door. But there doesn't seem to be anything barring the window, so the window is the door. And I'm not trapped. It's just like a place to get out of the rain, a place to sleep. So I'm here, I've either just had a sleep or I'm just having a rest. Maybe I just didn't feel like it today. Maybe I didn't feel like going with the others. And so yeah, you got, it's like, this happens a lot, you know, why? <laughs> 
you know, you can get the sense of something and then you can let the imagination run away. And then I made an image of a collar around my neck. I've made this image of a monkey in a cage with, or with a collar around his neck. Now I may just keep that there as a reserve on the side in case the rest of it doesn't make sense and I'll come back to it. But if I carry on with the rest of it and it runs and it makes sense, then I can probably safely discard the rest. So I probably shouldn't get too com like thinking about what I look like and stuff like that and what's going to be more available to me is what was going on in the heart like I said before meditating I sit down to meditate what's my current knowledge what have I done today that's where I am and what's my intention so those things are the things that should be available to me and then so that just then I just felt this like a, a nice so it's like the, the stuff that was, some of the stuff that was down in the stomach suppressed was just able to come up. So more the truth is about where I was at that point. You know, I'd stayed back, away, f not with the others. So my own choice. I was sitting there, my own choice on my own, feeling yeah, so I'm on my own. And sitting there just drawing my finger in the dirt so I obviously wasn't quite happy with what everyone else was wanting to do which has real sort of reflections in my own life this life And that's another thing I've thought about. People have, you know, if we're all on our second life, which is something new that I'm sort of thinking about. And kind of what's in this life this time is a slight reflection of what we had the first time. But maybe the first time we made the mistakes, and this time we won't make the mistakes. I'm not saying it was a mistake that I stayed in, that I wasn't doing what the others wanted to do at all. I'm not saying everything is mistakes, I mean you've got successes as well, right? So maybe it was a dress rehearsal. Oh! God needs things to go right in the end times. He needs us to do the right thing. So we already had a life where we maybe didn't do the right thing or we did do the right thing and at times we didn't, at times we didn't so that in this life we've got experience of that we find it easier to do what we did right before right again because we've done it once and the things we did wrong before we get a little warning you've done this wrong before deja vu guided me in my late teens okay well wow. that's uh, another one hmm. so again I've just sort of made a conclusion saying it out loud at the time and Feeling coming down, down into my heart. Let's 
It's nice. I just had a little shoot pain into my stomach. Feeling my whole body. This is a bigger realization. Just because I'm feeling something doesn't necessarily mean it's true. It's a very good indication, but it shows that I'm willing to adjust adjust my my position. It's affecting my heart. I'm willing to feel and adjust my position. So I'm a, my belief system will adjust because of this. And will have further ramifications. And only time will tell if they'll be good or what. does feel like it's furthering my understanding that we're all here on a second time since the last 6,000 years. Brings to mind another new thing I'm wanting to work out is when does the soul get attached to the physical body. Now, from the beginning, it should be designated. But I do feel there is a point at which the soul can return, and that, at that point, only at that point, the spirit body is created. So I'm just telling you this while I'm processing. So, six months, into the pregnancy is when I think this happens. Just because I think that's a nice way to split the nine and a half months pregnancy term. So we could either measure it in days, months or years. They're the only three true time measurements because you've got the spin of the earth, the moon orbit and the earth orbit the sun. And seeing as it doesn't really, it's like 267 odd days or something, or, you know, 0.7 whatever years, nine and a half months is definitely a better time scale. And if you do take off six months, you're left with three and a half months, which is a time times and half a time. Definitely the sort of time for. incubation or growing period, a cocoon period, you know. So three and a half months before the birth, that's the point at which if anything happens to the pregnancy, the spirit body will go into the spirit world and continue life there. Before that, the soul can go back and try again. But that currently is just a theory. 
but that would cut down on a heck of a lot of people you'd expect to find in the spirit world. Have they ever had a baby born before six months? Well, I mean, it's still possible that you could give birth to something early, earlier than six months, but that the spirit body still wouldn't be created until six months. And also, it's a real relief to me not to think about all those frozen embryos and that they haven't got souls in them, you know. There may have been a soul designated for that body. Probably not. I don't know if, if you could have any soulless human body. I don't believe you could. I believe that would be a stillbirth. And even if you could, it would have the life force of God. And nothing living without the life force of a child of God will have anything but the life force of God. Unless it's a dog's head with its head cut off with two electrodes plugged into it and they can make it blink. And that's just electricity doing that. It looks freaky though. Horrible. That's your Frankenstein. So I'm still just feeling stuff. This could go, I mean... There could be loads of stuff to balance with that. So I don't know, you know, the rest of the video might not be there. You might not have found any of it interesting, but I think it is quite a, I think quite a true reflection of how a meditation session can go. Um, there wasn't anything like major, major, but I think it does what I, what I could have hoped for. Um, you know, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I could levitate one day or disappear gradually? <laughs> Don't know. Um, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Well, I'll probably start uploading it because that takes a few hours for a long one, and I'll do some more meditation. <clears throat> but hopefully, you could hear me. <coughs> Just see my muscles. <laughs> I'm pretty skinny, really. But I like just to have the muscles I need for what I need to do. Which isn't that much. I've just started playing tennis the last couple of weeks. But anyway. Um, if you watched all of that, you must be quite keen on what it is to meditate or keen to see what I was going to come up with and I think that's thoroughly interesting and I shall think about it you see that in a sense I suppose I've got to the point where I've thought of this thing and I know I want to think about that you know I want to consider it and stuff so that's what I'm going to do and I'm not going to bore you anymore. So there is an example. And I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ciao. For now.